Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy. This is a series on creating a breakout game in Phaser 3 with Matter.js. Now, in the last video, we created these this line of bricks, and when you hit them, they disappear. And we did these blocks in code. So we have a for loop here that just creates a line of blocks. Now that is fairly hard to design. So we're gonna use Tiled, a tile map maker to design our levels. So if you are not familiar with Tiled, you can get it at mapeditor.org. And normally this is used to make um, games with tile maps. Breakout is not usually the example, but like uh, top-down RPGs, side scrollers, games like that. But we can use it for breakout as well, but a simplified use of tiled, more or less. So let's go, you can download tiled, we're gonna open it right here. We're gonna create a new map, uh, orthogonal CSV, you do not want it compressed. Uh, we're gonna make ours eight tiles wide by 10 tiles tall, and our tile size, this is important, is 96, width and 48 height. That's just the size of our block. So let's save as in our folder, in our project here, we're gonna make a new levels folder and we're gonna save this as level one. All right, oh, as a block. So we actually didn't try from a test previously. So let's actually delete this. So you're not gonna have this tile set set up I think Tiled is just confused, quite frankly. Okay, it should look like this when you create it. And so let's just rename this. We're gonna call this, I don't know, level. And now you need to make a tile set. Now in our case, we only have a block, so it's a one image. Normally you would have a atlas or a sprite sheet um, of pictures to choose from, but we only need one. So click new tile set. And we're gonna go browse, and we're gonna browse for our block.png Great, uh, embed in map, make sure this is checked. Everything else should be good here. Tile width, tile height, no margin, no spacing. The name is gonna be block. Now, okay. So here we are back to where it was before from our previous tests, I'm guessing. Uh, so now you can just start placing your tile, your blocks in tile. So let's just say, do that, do that. Do that. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Let's do this. It's not the world's greatest design. How about this? But it's not the world's worst design either. Well, maybe it is. Okay. Save. Now we need to export this. Uh, Phaser needs the exported JSON file for it to work. So we're going to do export. Okay. Okay, so now levels, oh, this should be in the levels folder. We'll move that, uh, level1.json. Okay. Let's go back to our project here. Levels. So we could put level, the TMX file, we're not gonna use it actually, but we could keep them in the same folder. Just do that. Move. And now I bet you this is going, I just close this, open. So we don't run into problems later. Right. Uh, let's see. Can I open toss it? No. Okay. Block. Redefine it. Okay. Save that back here. Okay. We're good now. Okay. So this is our levels folder. We have our level JSON. You see, this is how it's set up. Great. Close this map editor site. Now we need to preload our tile map in order to use it. So we actually have a tool and let's see how it loads in the small window. It arcade.co, you can check out our uh, tile map parser. Tools, tiled parser for phaser three. Now we can just drag and drop, that's our desktop. So let's just go here, breakout, and level. So we can select our level one JSON. Here it is. Now our tool basically gives you the code 
by reading your JSON file, your JSON file to produce basically the code you need without having to figure out what keys or what. That can be confusing if you uh, you doing this for the first time and not familiar with using Tiled. We we'll use it as a guide, but you can also largely copy and paste this. But uh, we already loaded our block, so it's the same load here for image. We're going to call this block. I'm going to call this tiles, but we do need to do the second one here. This dot load tile map. So this dot load dot tile map tiled json. Uh, we're going to call this. I'm going to call level one, and it is in levels level one dot json. Okay, so that's loading the tile map, and then we need to make it. So let's go to game now. Instead of creating all our blocks like this in a for loop, let's collapse this, we're going to create a tile map. And so I believe if you wanted to change stuff here, you could make it to produce uh, code more custom for you, but you're gonna type it out here. So let's see, map this dot make tile map. And the key we're using is level one. Level one, okay. And then we need a tile set. So map dot add tile set. And our tile set names is gonna be block. So block is what we set in tiled over here, block. That's the name that we're using, block. Now coincidentally, in our project, our tile set uses the block PNG, which is also keyed block. So basically, in, in this example, tiles refers to this, and in our project currently, it's called block. Oops. So it has block block. This is how it turned out. And now map dot create static layer. We don't need dynamic dynamic layers. So static layer is fine, and we it is called level one, and we put in this tile set. So we should at least see our blocks, which we do not. Valid tile names, level, what do we do? No oh, level, not level one. Oh, did I read the level? Oh yeah, I thought it was one. Level, so here's our creative level. Now our lives is sort of blocking. Now I'm still not entirely sure what the origin, what is up with the origin here, but we're just not gonna deal with that for now. And just move this guy up a little bit, okay. Now here's the level we designed in tiled right here. It is now shown in our game here, but you'll see there's no collision because these are just uh, pictures, tile maps with no collision. So there's a few ways to go about this, but we're going to uh, use a feature of uh, tile maps that Phaser has, which is create from tiles. And for each one of these tiles, we're gonna make a block out of them, effectively. So here we go. So the index is gonna be one. And now we know that in level JSON, you can just look at the data here, which is the data that represents our level. And zero is, is nothing. It's when there's nothing there. And then one is the block. So you can see that. So now we're gonna take every tile with index one, we're gonna replace it with no tile, and then we're going to the sprite config, we're gonna make a block out of them. Okay, good. So now we should see no changes really. Okay, except that they're shifted uh, because our block has a origin of zero, zero, and I believe the tile map has origin of, uh, no, the our block has origin of half, half, and the tile map has origin of zero, zero. So now this returns us an array. So we get an array of sprites. So what we can do is let's just map over them. Now this is different than the tile map. This is map in the functional programming sense. We're gonna um, go over each element in the array and then return something. So it's map, which is gonna be a game object. And so for each of the game objects or the sprites, is it a sprite, right? Game object that's sprite, so this should be a sprite. Yes, I just uh, we'll call it go. 
so for each of the sprites, what we're going to do is number one, we are going to sprite dot go dot x go dot width times half. We're just going to offset this plus equals go dot height so that it's back to where we expect it based on the map. That's better. And then block, we're going to go, we're going to do this dot matter, not make this dot matter dot add dot exist that game object. Uh, go. We pass in a game object. We want some options. So now we know our blocks are static. So true. Then we're going to return the block. So now what do we get here? We return a game object of game objects. Now we know this is going to, it's, it's actually going to give us a phaser dot physics dot matter dot sprite. I mean, by default, when you do this, what you're really getting is a matter sprite. So there's that. So now let's just say, instead of image, we're gonna say sprite. And we're gonna do this dot blocks. Now map returns an array, right? Okay. And let's save it. And now we should, yep, you see these bounds here. These are the matter collision bounds. There we go. So now they're not disappearing, but they're definitely working with the physics system. Now we only disappear, or we only uh, consider them blocks if we set data as blocks. So let's do that. Block.setData type block. Right, that's what we did over here, if you remember. So now, bloop, and we are logging them out, and you'll see this is a sprite, and this is the list of blocks. So we actually don't need to keep logging this forever, it doesn't really matter, we know what it is. Okay, so that's working. There we go. So now, now the blocks are not colored, so that's uh, less fun. And so let's see here. If we wanted to color them, how would we go about doing that? So create from tiles. This is just a game object. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So what we may have to do, can we add custom properties? Now I'm just thinking out loud of how you can change colors. So we are going to do the simple thing here and give it a random color. So colors. Uh, so first one, red. Next one, uh, green. And lastly, blue. And then here, block dot set tint. Nope. Set tint. Although realistically, why can't I? Oh, let's do this instead. We're gonna do this as over here. So we can do block.setTent. Okay, uh, so colors, phaser.math.between, we're gonna get a random number between zero and colors.length minus one because I believe between is inclusive. All right, so let's see how that goes. All right, now we just got crazy colors. These are random. Look at that, cool. Okay. So there's that. Now, some alternate ways that you can change different colors is instead of creating just tiled, um, 
tile images here, you could do, um, let's see, where here is this shape tool? Looks like tile was updated since I last used it. But you can create an object. Now, where is my object? I know, right. If you want to make objects, you need to create an object layer. Let's just say, and then I believe, no, here, image. Now, if there was an easy way in tile, then you may know this, how to basically lock it off so that it draws into each individual uh, cell here in the right spot so that it basically automatically aligned. I'm not sure if, you, if there's a way to do that. Align. No, maybe some snapping or something. But nonetheless, if you were to place it this way, you can uh, put in different values here for type, like a color, and then back in phaser, instead of map from create tiles, be map dot create from objects, I believe. And then, right, so let's say it would be objects and then what you replace it with probably zero in the sprite config, and then you would be able to, hmm, I guess you wouldn't, would not see it, but you can do map.objects. And these are all the objects on the tile map, and you can loop through each one. For example, um, let's see, object. Yep, so name, type, all that stuff. So for example, if you did that, right, then you can create a the same thing here, effectively this, and then you would tint it red. And that is by setting type here and by creating objects instead of using tiles. Another way you can do is simply have more blocks. So our, our tile set is just one block, but you could have uh, all the different colors that you want. So you don't have to even use tint in those cases, you would just have a red block, a blue block, a green block, an orange block, a yellow block, whatever it is, uh, set up here as each individual images in your tile set. Then you can just use the same, complete these objects, you can use the same, um, same way we've been doing it before, you just put your blocks on the tile map, and then you would go here, let's delete this. You would go here, and then instead of it being one, you may have you may have one, two, three, four, depending on your different colors. And you would do one for each of the colors that you have, and then tint those blocks the, per, the correct color, and then add those blocks together into the single blocks array here, so that when we check that the blocks array is zero for the UN screen, it'll still work. Now we're not gonna show that in this particular series, but you can go ahead and try that out for yourself. All right, so now in the next video, we're gonna go do the game over screen and the you win screen. And we're gonna make one scene that's gonna share the logic, but show you a different message depending on whether you won or you lost.